Welcome back. Today we're finishing the bookcase. If that sounds good, stick around. The final thing I want to do on this bookcase is to put a fancy ornate top on it. Just finishing trim, in there we're going to insert some clocks and gauges and I'll do that um, down the line a little bit. But today I want to finish it by putting on that crown. Material wise, once again, it's going to be 18 millimeter pine board, the same material we've used throughout and I'm going to recycle a piece of scrap material to give me this profile. I'm not sure if you're familiar with these type of templates. These are actually used for making raised panel doors, the raised panel doors with the arches inside and this particular set is for a French style raised panel door. The idea behind the templates is that this template here would make the arch on top of a door this template here would make the corresponding arch on the frame. And if you remember when we made the raised panel doors, same idea, but I've now got an arch here and a corresponding profile on the frame. That's what these do for us on a router table. I've got a full set of these and I can't remember where I bought them from, but I'll try and remember and drop some information in the link. Now you don't need these, of course. You can make templates out of plywood or MDF and that's what most people do. I just like these because they're CNC made and it gives me a very precise join and profile when I bring them together. I'm going to use this one here to make the profile on top of my cupboard. So I'm recycling these for a different purpose. So this is the material we're going to use. It's some of the offcuts of the 18 millimeter pine. All I've done is I've just given myself a straight edge, just use a TS55 to rip along the length. And I've squared up an end and cut this to the exact length of the top of the bookcase where it's going to fit. So this is a template I'm going to use. As you can see, it's going to give me that profile. What I've decided I'm going to do, because it's just a simple project, so we're not going to overly complicate this final step. The profile is going to start at the end of the board like this. Give me a flat line here, curve up, and then continue to be a flat line all the way across here. So we get to this end where we'll use the same template, turn it over, and that will then give me that profile. So in essence, I'll have a wide piece of stock here that I can put the gauges inside there. And who knows, maybe down the line, a bit of carving to make it all nice and pretty. But for now, to get the job finished, that's what we're going to do. I've deliberately left this wide and that's to give me some clamping opportunity. So this is my reference edge. As you can see, I've marked it up as such. So everything will work from this edge. I neither know nor care whether this edge is actually parallel to that edge or if it's square to the ends. It's purely to give me a clamping ability when we come to cut this out. With that said, we'll now mark out the template. So bring it up to the end, flush it off with this edge here and make sure it's flush with that end there. And then just simply use a pencil to give me the profile and show that that's waste and hopefully that nice arc picks up on the camera. Then just going to make a mark purely for reference in about the centre there and we'll come back to that mark in a second. Turn the template over, flush it to the base again and flush it to the end and draw that side of the template on and mark the waste. So we can now use a centre mark that we've just made and the reference point here from the template to just continue that line along. Like that. And then I can use that same line to continue across there. So 
So hopefully now you can start to see the shape that we are going for. Nice and slim here, nice graceful arc up, nice fat bit here to allow me to mount the gauges and what have you. Continuing along, nice gentle arc down to the end of the material. So the next job is I want to cut out this waist and that's why I didn't rip this board down to this width because now I've got the ability to overhang the board and clamp it down here and then use a jigsaw to just rough out this edge. So with that additional material we left on the stock you can see that my cutting area is well clear of the edge of my bench and therefore I can come in with the jigsaw. This arc here still cuts into the bench, so we'll come straight across with a line, cut out this part of the waist first, and then I'll come back in, reclamp it, and then refine that line. I'm going to use my Bosch jigsaw for this, so not a Festool tool. Aha, uh -huh, that'll get you confused. Although I do have dust collection on this, connected up to my CT, and it's powered by my CT as well, so when we start the machine, the CT will kick into place. I don't find the dust extraction on this particular tool that effective. So I'll also be using a dust mask for this job as well. As you can see, I've deliberately kept away from that line. So it is a very basic shape that you're cutting out with the jigsaw. And now we'll use the templates and a flush cut bit on the router table to clean this up. So this is the bit I'm going to use next. As you can see, it's a flush cut bit. And you can see it's got a bearing on the top. I'm not sure if you can see, but just between the bottom of the bearing and the top of the cutter, there is a very, very small gap. What we want to do therefore is to set this up so the bearing will run across the edge of the template and the cutter will then clean up the wood behind that and that way we get a pristine cut to the shape of the template. So job one, connect the template to the material. Now obviously our template isn't long enough so we're going to cut this in sections. We'll come in first of all and we'll cut this section out here. I'll just use any straight edge, I may as well use another template to give me that straight edge across there. So I will now route this part of the profile out. And I'll take that as far as I can, just using different templates to give me that straight edge, like so. So we'll come through and make that cut on the router table. We'll then stop and we'll take the profile one put that on the end here, inverted, and then we'll go ahead and finish off the cut. And that's going to give me a beautiful piece of wood to the right profile. Let's get this attached. There's a number of ways you can attach these templates to the board. Pins, you can nail through this material and pin it to the board. You can use some of the uh, super glue type thing with the accelerator on it. I'm a fan of double-sided carpet tape. Just keep the tape away from the line, because you don't want to cut through the tape, of course. Although if you do, it doesn't matter. Well, wow. I've just got enough to finish the exercise. whoop doo And now carefully line this up with the flush edges, as we did earlier on when we drew the profile. And once you're happy with that, press that down to place. Line up your straight one. You now want to get this edge here flush with that edge there, obviously. And then line that up. Put that one down. Line the next one up. Like so. And line the last one up. So now you can see I'm using my templates to build out that profile. So now we go and set up the router table. So we've dropped our bit, our flush cut bit into the router table. And now I want to set this up so the bearing is going to roll against the black edge of the template. So we simply bring the material up and do it by eye. I 
and I'm looking for the cutting edge of the router bit to be at the top of the stock and the bearing rolling across the black material and that is going to be about there. Now obviously we're going to cut this material on this side because we're looking to take down this waste stock here to give us this black profile so we're going to work across the router table. Most router tables have the ability to do this type of freehand cut and on the Festool system that's where this second fence comes into its own. If you're not using the Festool system most tables will have a small post that you screw into the table here and then you bring your material up to the post and then you pivot it into that cut. The Festool system is slightly different and we did cover this on the Festool overview of the CMS table so if you are using this and you've not seen that video it might be worthwhile checking it out and the Festool system uses this gadget here and what we do is we set this little black arm up to run on that bearing like that and now I can use that to guide myself into the cut. Come in with the dust guard to keep us all safe. The other thing I've done is I've brought my router table out to the front of my MFTs. Now I can use my MFTs as a runoff area for my stock so you can see it's supported throughout the cut and I'm using the capex table with the capex on as an infeed. That's a prime example of what I talk about some modular approach where I move things around depending on the job. So we're supported on the infeed and we're supported on the outfeed therefore I'm not fighting the material, the material is always supported. So my job once again is to operate and feed it through the cut. Secure, safe, slow and steady. Let's get cracking. So now you can see what we end up with. This is nice and smooth, it's level with our template and if you look on the back you can start to see that we've now got that profile that we were looking for. So now we simply move our templates along. And again lining up to this edge and the end. press that into place. Now you'll see here as I routed that straight edge I routed way into this cut so now I can bring the bearing and the cutter flush with this edge here and now I can go ahead and finish off this profile. And there you have it, your profile is pretty much cut. Now it's up to you, you could leave it like this with the flat profile we've got, a bit of a clean up with the sander on the top just to take out those ridges where we join the templates or we can make our life a bit more interesting. I like the idea of this profile, the same profile we put on the doors and the same profiles we put on the drawer fronts and across this edge here I think it would look quite pretty if we had that same profile and that will just to me link the entire thing together visually. You don't have to but then again you don't have to put a crown moulding on. Why not? So good practice. Now there's nothing complicated about this. We choose a side, we set up the same router bit we've been using for the profiles all along. We use our piece of scrap wood. You did keep it, didn't you? To give us the same profile, the same depth. And then we simply route this in. I don't want the profile coming down this edge here. I want it just to run here and stop so it runs out. So I don't want to make a cut here, so I want to protect that cut. So I will be putting a template on there to give me a run in and that's purely to protect this edge. And I'll also use a template on the other end to give me a run out. Now that's where this bearing comes in. So we don't need templates this time round. I'm going to use a template purely to protect this 
end, I won't be using any templates across the rest of the profile apart from the run out at the far end of the board. So this bearing is now going to run across the very top of this material and the router bit will give us a profile on this side of the job. If I try and show you from this side, you can see the bearing is running down the edge and that bearing is going to guide us throughout this cut. And because it's slightly proud, when I put my template on top, you can see that's going to give me a running area on the bearing, which gives me a clean start and a clean finish on the stock. Hope that made sense. So all I've done, I've set this up using our profile, and I'm just checking that my bearing is slightly higher than the material, and it is, so my template idea for run in and run out will work. If that bearing was below, I would then still use the template, but I put a bit of scrap stock on the end to make sure I've got a clean run in here. But we're good in this situation. So I'm now just gonna take a template, overhang it at the end, and just make sure I am flush with the start of the cut. Doesn't matter if it runs out, that's fine, but I want that first cut there to be flush on that very end, and it is. And the fact this runs out doesn't matter to us at all. So the idea goes, now with my template fixed, my leading edge of my template, before there's any material cut, can come in and I can position that on the bearing. I can then feed that through the cut and the bearing will then start to run down this edge and it'll give me a beautiful clean start to this cut. And similarly, I can do the same on the feed out. So once again, template attached, overhanging the material. Once I finish, I will run the bearing here till I'm clear of the cut and then I'll, and then we are good to go. So, let's get that cut. And if we've been good boys and girls, we're rewarded with something that looks like this, a nice profile piece. It's got this nice detailing on it, not overly complicated, but just finishes it off. So the next job is how do you fit it to the top? Look at that, that shows you how long we've been building this, this project. This isn't yet treated, and look, it's already taken on a nice golden hue, and this is straight out of the, um, the storage area, and look how white and pale it looks. Okay, so, this is gonna fit on the top like that, but once again, I'm going to be looking for the four millimeter gap um, between it and the door. I had a few comments about shims. So when I was positioning this door, if you remember, I laid it flush, I made the marks, then moved the marks by four millimeters to give me the gap. I was asked um, in the questions, why did I not just use shims for that? And you don't really need to, and I'm just lazy and to go to the extra step of making a four millimeter shim to do this just seems a bit i don't know irrelevant to me and i'm not going to use shims on this for the same reason i'm going to rest this up on the top of the doors and i'm just going to use a pencil to mark the top part of this panel on the back and then i will move that line by four millimeters move it down by four millimeters effectively list, lifting this up and giving me that gap that i am looking for and that way i know it's always going to be consistent it's always going to be bang on four millimeters and i've not got to mess about with shims that's the reason why so offer this into position rest it on top of the doors like so and just flush up the end up yeah. like that and then just make a mark at the back and then repeat that same activity rest it carefully onto the door flush up this end make a mark on the back and now make a mark in the middle and now I can use that line there and just drop it down by four millimeters like so so i can come in with some scrap pieces of wood now line them up onto those marks attach those scrap pieces to our crown probably using pocket hole screws will be quick and easy and then i can just screw that to the top and that way it's removable let's do that and then it's simply a matter of dropping it on the top and screwing it in let's see what it looks like 
Hey, 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 hey. And there you have it. What do you think? That's come out pretty well, I think. Quite pleased with that. It's been a long journey, or it seems like a long journey. Um, but yeah, we got there. So that's it. That's the end of the bookcase build in the workshop. I've obviously got some more bits and bobs to do. Um, I do want to put some storage inside these bottom cubby holes. So I've got my hand tools um, available to me. So I'll be building some tills to go in these bottom areas. Couple of adjustable shelves here that I can get my books, my reference guide, my design influences up there. I can now sort out that back part of the workshop behind the camera that's a bit of a dumping ground and I can get everything now stored away in the appropriate drawers. But overall, good job. Hope you found it useful. Uh, any questions in the comments? I'll be doing an end-to-end -end video of the entire build that should be out in a couple of weeks time but for now thanks for watching